So we're going to talk about summation notation. Summation notation. I like the sound of it. That sounds good. This is something that you can either be afraid of it or you can embrace it. Who are you going to be? Thank you. We're going to embrace it. We're not going to be afraid of it. You already know one Greek letter. Remember that Greek letter? What was it? U. 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 We're going to learn another Greek letter. You guys sound like kids. What was that letter again? U. I love it. Okay. Now we're going to learn another Greek letter. This is an uppercase letter. So they have uppercase and lowercase just like we do. And this little thing is called a sigma. Now I don't want you to look at this and say E. Does anybody look at me already and thought it looked like an E a little bit? Don't do it. Does anybody, in, does anybody in here know a language that has an alphabet different from ours? Anybody? You, okay. So, do you want, well, no, but the alphabet has to be different. Spanish uses our alphabet, right? Well, yeah, More or less. I mean, there's a couple of little wacky things. But for the most part, I'm talking to you Chinese, Greek, um, Hebrew, Arabic, right? They use different alphabets, right? So, the thing is, um, when you learn another alphabet, if you try to relate it back to yours, you're not going to learn it. So you have to clear your mind. You have to not see A, but you have to see sigma. I look at this and I see sigma. And it's really nice to know that sigma, because if you were to read Greek and you came across that, you make the S sound. And what else starts with S but the word sum? And what does that mean? When you see sum in a word problem, what is that telling you to do? So, add, right? So we're going to be adding. So this sigma symbol, this uppercase sigma, is a signal to you to add stuff. That's all it is. It's going to add stuff. Did you have a question? No? Okay. So, all right, ready? Okay. So this is a general format of something that's telling you to add something. So here's my big sigma, which means add some stuff. That's what it's telling you to do. And we've got a bunch of other junk around it. So let's look at the junk. Well, this is telling you what should you add. This kind of, there's going to be an expression next to that sigma symbol. This is what you're going to be adding. And we have this, what we call a little counter. And it tells us what its value is when you start and what its value is when you're done. And in between, it's going to bump this up by once. Anybody here at program at all? Computer program at all? I usually get one, maybe once a year, somebody knows how to program. Um, when you program a computer, we have these things called loops. And that means you're going to do something so many times. So you're going to do this. The first time you do this, the value of i is 1. The second time you do it, the value of i is 2. The third time you do it, it's 3. Then it's 4. Then it's 5. And I'm going to stop. Because it tells me to stop at 5. Yes, it's actually really easy. Once you figure it out, but you know, it's one of those things that you can psych yourself out of this. I don't want you to psych yourself out of it. So let's just do this example here. This is an example of a summation notation. So what does this equal? So my i, this value of i, the first time through, that's this value, it's 1. So what is 1? You look at the expression, wherever I see i, I'm going to substitute a 1. And I only see one i here, that's it. So. Then what? I'm going to go back in for more. But remember what sigma stands for sum, and sum means add, so I'm going to put a plus in. So I'm adding 1 plus. Now the second time I go back, I bump this up by 1. It becomes a 2. So now what's i's value? 2. I'm going to add a plus. The next time I go through, my i has been bumped up a value. I'm back in. What's i? Three, but I'm summing. Bump it up again. I is now four, so what do I have here? Bump it up again. Now do I keep going? Do I stop? I stop. Why do I stop? Because the five. So this this thing right here, which takes up one little space, stands for all this. And then we can add it up. Three, six, four, fifteen. I hope that's right. Good, I got it right. So it's kind of a shorthand. It doesn't look like shorthand, but it is. Now we use this sigma, we use it a lot in math. Now we're going to use it a whole bunch with our statistics unit, but it's used in other places in math as well. You see it again in algebra too. So it's coming back. It's a good thing to know now. Yes? Isn't it just easier to go to 1.2? Well, what if this went up to 100? Right? 
So, you know, there's going to be some. When you get to algebra 2, you're going to see some with this little symbol on top. Anybody know what that little symbol on top is? What is that? Infinity. Do you want to write that down? I don't. I don't want to write all those down. So, again, don't fight it. And you know, I need your mind. Don't fight. Who's going to fight it? Don't fight it. I'm not going to let her fight it. Okay. So that's what that is. Let's do another example. Summation. I equals 1 to 3. 3 I. So let's see if we can apply what we got here. It's saying add these three I's. Add them. But the first one I start, what's I's value? So I can 3 times 1. Wherever I see the I, I make that substitution. Plus. Okay, what's I's value now? 2. two. two. So what am I going to write here? Plus. What's I's value now? 3. three. So what am I going to write? Do I keep going or do I stop? Stop. I stop. I stop. So this is 3 plus 6 plus 9, 18. So here's my recommendation. When you expand them, I know you know that 3 times 1 is 3 and you just want to write it 3. I would really recommend just writing it all at first and then simplifying after so you can really see that you expanded it right. Questions? Let's do one more. Uh, I'm going to do k now. k equals 1, 2, 4 of k to the third power. Now I'm using k. Is that okay? Is it k okay? <laughs> yes! Right? It might not be an i, but it has to match. They have to match. Now if this had a k and this was an x, you would not be replacing with the value. They have to match. So let's see what I got here. What's my first term going to be in this sum? What's K when I start? One, one, two, one to the power three. Then what? Plus. Don't forget your plus. I'm adding. Second time through, what's K's value? Plus. Four to the power three. Questions on how I did this expanding? What do you think? Now we got, oh, uh, I'm trying to make something easier. Plus one. Plus two to the third power. Three. Three to the third power. Okay, I'm going to have Jerry add this up again. way faster than me. What do you get? Oh, it's in this calculator. You don't need a calculator. Jerry, come on. you got that mind going. <laughs> what? 100. He's my guy to the 48th in his head. You don't have to do those. It's calculated. Right? This is what this means. You're going to, we call this iterating through. Right? We're just, we're just repeating through and we're bumping up that value. Yeah. Um, so what if it has like a bunch of numbers in the same percent or like for example like 45 over the sum? What would you do? 45 over the this? No, like um We're get to that. We're gonna just get a little ahead. We're, we're gonna get to that, you'll see. Okay, so general idea, do we see what a summation is doing? Okay, are the questions? Because we're gonna we're gonna raise the bar a little bit. Who's ready for that bar to go up? Who's got their mind still open has it shut down? Who's got their minds still open? Y'all ready for more? Thank you, three people. Excellent. All right. Look at that. <gasps> Who's afraid? Me. Oh, come on. You're bigger than that. What are you afraid of? We're not afraid. We're not afraid of that. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Now, here's my summation. When I start, my I value is 1. When do I stop? N. N. So they're not telling me when to stop, but let's see if I can kind of fill this in anyway. The rule is that whatever i's value is, you replace i in your expression. So when I start, what's i? So what am I going to get here? Whatever this means, that's what I get. Add. What's i's value now? Two. So I make this x and I put this little two down here. We don't know what that means yet, but this is what it says to do yet, right? What would the next one be? And how many times am I going to be doing this till I get to x? And now this is kind of a strange little thought here, but I don't know what n is. I know. What we're basically doing is we're writing generic formulas. Does anybody know what the word genetic generic means? What does that mean? Yeah, it's like a real just general case. That should work for anything, right? It's a general formula. So what does n mean in statistics? Do you remember what is n? What is it? It's not a variable. It has a special meaning in statistics. So number of number of data points. So look, I've got a data set 
sitting here. What's its end value? Six, how'd you get six? One, two, three, four, five, six. N is the number of data points. So now, can I rewrite this one a little bit? I equals one, now what's N? Six, because I'm working on, on this data set over here. So I'm going to get x sub 1 plus x sub, I'm sorry, x sub y equals x sub 1 plus x sub 2. And how long am I going to keep going? So Exactly. That's how you expand it. Maybe we don't know what this means yet, but do we expand it? That shows we understand the signal notation. So yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah? What happens if you like, don't have the number? That's a great question. If we don't know what it is, we're going to keep it just general. Great, that's a great question. But we're, what we do with the generic formula is we apply it to a specific case. So now I'm giving you a specific case. How do I apply this general rule? Now I need to figure out what this means. Now listen to how I say this. x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3. Right? Why am I saying that word sub? Why am I doing that? Because what would happen, what does sub mean? You know, you take it in English, right? You learn about prefixes? Sub? Under, under? Under? So look where it is. Should we confuse this with being up in the top here? Where do we put stuff in the top? The superposition. What goes there? Exponents. Are these exponents? They are not exponents. They are position. They are location. And how do we read this? You can read this as the first x. You can read this as the second x. Because the problem we have, so statistics has a lot of these um, little rules or these little conventions they follow. The letter n always means how many data points do I have? Well, x means your data. I have a point of data. We're always going to call it x. But look at all these x's. I've got six x's. How do you know which x you mean? So what they do is they say, well, why don't we just label them? This will be the first x. This will be the second x and so on, so that I know which x you're talking about. In this data set, what is x sub 3? Uh, eight. 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 What is x sub 5? One. One. Oh. Fifth x. Oh. So it's just a locator. Oh. It's just a positional thing. So now, right, I've expanded this out. Can I replace it? What is x sub 1 in this situation? Four. Four. What is x sub 2? Two. What is x sub 3? 8. So I'll keep going. x sub 4? 1. All right. So what does this notation mean? In this situation, what do you think it means in the general case? What did we do in the specific case? Look what we're doing. We're adding. We're adding. And what are we adding? What numbers are we adding? We're adding these numbers. So what do you think this means? Add. Add what? Add your data. Add your Add. data points. That's what this means. Yes, ma'am. So the n on top equals six because there are six numbers there? For this case, I have six. Yes. Okay. And so the x, um, the x one is equal to that. Telling you what to add. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Yep. Yes, ma'am. So the s in front of the number is the same for substitution. The s in front of the numbers. This? Yeah. Oh, this is its name. This data set has a name, and its name is s. It's set s. Yeah. It continues. Yes. Well, what it means is it's going to continue until you get to n. It's just a short, because I don't know how many to write, do write. So it's an indication that this would continue. If n was 100, how long would this be going? You get x of 4 plus x of 5, probably up to x of 100. So I don't want to write 100 things. Or it could be maybe x of n is small, I don't know. But it's just a way to kind of write it out. So this means add the numbers in your data set. That's all it means. Now we could add them. 6, 8, 14, 24, 25, 37? Did I get that right? No, we don't want to check. What do you think? Did I do it right? Yeah. Oh. What? All right. Who, you know what? I followed this somewhat. I'm just looking for 
Somewhat. Somewhat. I am not following it at all. Question, I need a question. We're not following it at all. I have to know where you got lost. Where are we lost? Um, I got lost around um, the example, like... This one? Yeah. Right. So this here's my example, right? Do you know how I got n equals 6? No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it's always how many points are in the set. Okay? So this, I expand this. Do we, do we understand the expansion, where this came from? Do we have a question on that part? Because remember what this means. Wherever I see an i, I'm going to put the 1 in. Wherever I see the i, I'm going to put the 2 in. And this, this summation symbol means add them together. I'm doing it six times because of this. I replace this n with what my n actually is. I use my locations to figure out where it goes. And then it's basically saying, could you add up the numbers in the data set, please? Well, he doesn't say please. It's not very polite. <laughs> yes. Is that the i that's, oh, why does i add one? Yeah. That's just the property of summation. That's what it means to do. Add one each time. That's what it means. Yeah. It doesn't have to. Now, for what we're doing, probably. But if for some reason you didn't want to add in the first one, you could say start with two. You could. No reason why you couldn't. So this is just telling you where to start. We probably want. All right, let's see, what, what's next? Let's see what we're doing here. I have some new tries for this. Um, I'm on almost the bottom of page three. So I want you to try these and see how we do. So let's go to the that formula for me. You sum up n numbers, divide by that n. And it's a very general way to say, this is me. It'll work for any data set with n values in it. So that's basically what we're gonna do because you're gonna get a whole page full of formulas that we're using in class. And the good news is, you can use the formulas on the test. But if you don't know how to read this kind of thing, is that helpful? So that's why I'm asking you to fight for it a little bit. Some people give up, they say, this is too hard and I cannot do it. And when you say that, you're right. Whenever you say I can't do it, you're right. But if you say I can do it, or I can do it with a little more work, you're right too. So I want you to be right and not be afraid. Because now we're going back to the mean absolute deviation. Now remember we had this mean absolute deviation is you add up all these absolute values of deviations. The x minus the mean, divide by the number that you have. So watch what I've done here. What's the difference between this one up here and this one over here? What changed, Kaylin? What changed? Oh, I the signal. Yeah. Is that the only thing that's different? Yeah. No. no. Hey, and, and I have a little sub i here because we know what that means, right? We know what that means. Let's see if we can do a real quick example. Um, I can't remember what that last set of data was. Eight four six nine. What's the mean of this? Somebody want to find the mean? Real quick, before we find the mean. Here she goes. She's doing it. Eight plus four plus six plus nine. Press enter. Divide by four. And what's 25 divided by 4 approximately? What'd you get? Wait. You said, what? I just want to be. 27 and then Which is approximately? 6.75. 6.75? I'm going to make it 7. How's that? Just to make it easy. Okay? So my mean is 7. So let's expand this out. First of all, what's n? Remember, count the numbers. So I've got the sum i equals 1 out of 4 of x sub i minus uh, the mean. Now I can divide by 4, which is, let's expand, x sub 1 minus mean plus x sub 2 minus mean. Where is this coming from? Wait a minute, you're probably just looking at my back just a second. Did I expand this correctly? All I did was, wherever I saw the i, I put the 1 in. I went back into my loop. It's now two. It's now three. Yes. It's now four. Let's replace that. What's x sub one? Eight. And what's my mu? Seven. Seven. Plus x sub two is four. Four. Minus that same mean. X sub three. Six. Minus the same mean. X sub four. 
over four. Now think about what we did on that worksheet. I broke it down a little for you, right? Isn't this what you did? You took the number, subtracted the mean? One plus, uh, that's negative three, but I'm taking absolute value. That's negative one, but I'm taking absolute value. Isn't this what you did for homework? You found these yeah. two. It's the same thing. Isn't this the formula? Yeah. Yes. So if you get this, I'm giving it to you on the test. You can have it. They're giving it to you on the SOL. You can have it. Now, if you're saying, I can't do this, that's just, then it's not going to help you. If you kind of do that little bit of a stretch, it gives you all formula. Come June, do you think, or May, you're going to remember this? Maybe not. This is going to be staring you right in the face. Unless things are a number. Are we amazed? Yes. 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 How do I get four for what? Because what's n? Right? N is four, you count your numbers. One, two, three, four. That's n. Because it's a mean, I'm going to divide by the number that I have. All right, so that's the mystery of that formula. So now when I'm looking at other formulas, we're going to keep this in mind. Because, we're moving on to the next thing. Because, 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 because. We learned about mean absolute deviation. Mean absolute deviation tells me, on average, how far each point is from the mean, right? We're going to learn about another measure that really tells you the same kind of thing. Yes? Okay, so um, I want to go back a little bit. When we first started learning about MAD, do you remember what the problem was? The problem was, when we first did it, we took the deviations. Remember, there was a kid, the, the mean age was 14. When I added up the two kids down here, it was seven. I added up the two kids there, it was seven. And remember, we took the average of a zero out. Who remembers that? Thank you, two people. Three people. Excellent. So the, the way they worked around that was to say, why don't you take absolute value? That way, you know, it's positive. So that's one school of thought. There's another school of thought that says, well, there's another way to guarantee we're going to have positive numbers so that they want it up to zeros. And that way is to square it. And then what does squaring something mean? multiply it by itself, right? Two factors of that number. <coughs> Why does that guarantee no negatives? Why does squaring something say there won't be any negatives? How come? Wow, that's fantastic. Even when you do square a negative number, let's say I have negative four. What's negative four times negative four? The positive 16. So squaring it is another way to guarantee there's no negative numbers here. So why don't we do that? We'll find the distances, and then we'll square them, and then we'll average the squares instead of working with absolute value. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So that's what they said to do. And when, when we do that, we get something called variance. Variance is when you add up all the squares, and then you divide by however many you have. That's variance. So let's see here. Um, I have a formula. Let's see if we can kind of pick it apart. So summation, I goes from 1 to n. Now if you remember what mad was, it was summation, I goes from 1 to n of the absolute value. Look at this one. It's the summation of those distances, but squared. So now it's saying what you do is to take each x, subtract the mean, square it for each x. Take each x, subtract the mean, square it. Add them all together, divide by the number you have. We're taking the average or the mean of all those squares. That is variance. And then look at this, what's going on here. This little thing here, I don't want you to see an O. This is another Greek letter. And to make it just that much more confusing, it's also sigma, but this is the lower case. Uppercase sigma means add stuff. Lowercase sigma relates to this. Oh, that's not fair. You can do it. Everybody's got their head in your hands. Oh, we can't, we can't possibly do it. Yes, you can. It's Greek class. Get used to this now. Greek. So we're, when we say sigma squared, remember how we got here? We squared a bunch of stuff. So we say sigma squared, that's the same as variance. How do you get it? You get all the distances. Now instead of taking absolute value, we're going to square them. Take that mean. That's variance. Okay, so let's do an example here. So where is this guy? This guy is on page four. Uh, 
the first kind of set of boxes on page four. Everybody finding it? So again, I've got a set of data here. This is data set S. It has these values in it. I've already calculated the mean for you. It's five. Let me put the mean up here. I can see it. We're going to do the exact same thing <coughs> that we did for um, Matt, which was X minus mean. Remember how that's called a deviation? We're going to find those. What's one minus five? What's three minus five? Four minus five. Six minus one. Yeah, okay? <coughs> this is not new, right? Didn't we do this when we were doing math? Now for Matt, this step is different. For Matt, you just made them all positive. What we're going to do is we're going to square these numbers. What's negative four times negative four? Negative two times negative two. Negative one times negative one. Right? So we're squaring all of those numbers instead of taking absolute value. Okay, that step is different. But now the step is the same. Take that mean. Now what am I dividing by? What's my n here? Six, right? I have six points. Okay, I need my calculator people to go and figure this out for me. Right? It's seven. Miss Corey, it's going to six. We don't need a calculator. We got Jerry. We don't need one. All right, seven. Now what is seven? Seven is this thing we're calling sigma squared, which is variance. So it's a lot like finding that, except instead of taking absolute value, you square them. Yes? That's a smart girl. But I'm squaring them. Aren't they getting really big? They're getting way big. Yeah, she's made the most brilliant observation, I think, of any student that I've taught this to. She says, wait a second. Yeah, they're positive. We get rid of that issue. Or if you add them, we get zero. However, isn't this like really exaggerating how far they are from the mean? They're really only four away. Now you're telling me 16? What if something was eight away? Now it's 64 away. Because think of what's squaring, how that gets bigger. It gets bigger really quickly. So this could be a problem. And you're absolutely right. And the statistician said, you know, you're right. So how can I undo the effects of squaring something? Take its square root. What is the square root of sigma squared? Sigma. And that's exactly what they said to do. You know what? It's making this artificially big. So why don't we take the square root to try and get it down to about the right magnitude? Very smart. Is your question? Yeah. So the lower case sigma squared is seven. Yes. And that's called variance. Variance is seven. We use sigma squared because we are always going to take that square root, and that has a special name as well, the sigma without it. And you know what? I'm going to have to leave you in suspense. But we need to go to work. So we have the variance, which is sigma squared. We're going to now take the square root of the variance, and that gives us standard deviation. Anybody have science? Um, does it work? Anybody? No? No? Can you close that, please? Everybody right? just close when you come in so you can leave the door the same way. Um, she's, been, she's taught this in science. Anybody seen this stuff in science at all? No. Standard deviation. So standard deviation, excuse me, standard deviation is a lot like math in that it is a measure of average distance from the mean. It's just a different method of getting there. So let's see here. Why are we taking the square root? It's exactly what Emma said, is that when we square stuff, to make sure it's positive, we're exaggerating those differences, the distances from the mean. So to counterbalance all the squaring, we take that square root. Um, that and standard deviation do measure the same thing. It is a, a measurement of average distance from the mean. It's just a different way of going about it. So let's look at an example. This should be the next example on um, page four. This is using that same data set we had uh, the other day with the, uh, the kids in the family and their ages. It's the same one. So let's see if we can find their standard deviation. So I've got my point, I've got all my data points. I've already calculated the mean and it's about 12. What's the n for this set of data? Six. Six. Remember, count up the data points. I've got six data points. So we're going to just find our deviation. Remember, that's what this is. It's a deviation. How far from the mean is this point? Zero minus 12. I think my 12 a little closer. Zero minus 12? Minus 12. You with me, guys? I, I should not let you go to lunch anymore. I'm sorry. As I feel like you're not here at all. Um, 10 minus 12? 11 minus 12? Thank you, one 
person who is listening? 14 minus 12. Yeah? Did I do that right? Okay. Look at him. He's all like asleep. What'd you have for lunch? A sandwich. Do you have something really sugary? So then what's this? Now what I do, now ordinarily you're taking mad, we would square, we would take the absolute value. Yeah, I don't feel like anybody's with me. Right, if we were finding mean absolute deviation, what would you do next? Not yet. Oh, you put because if I take the average here, I'm going to get zero. So what would I do? What do those bars mean? The um, order of absolute value, right? So I make them all positive. We're using a different method. This method says square the values. What's negative 12 times negative 12? Negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 1, right? We're squaring these values. Now we can go ahead and take that mean. Why am I dividing by 6? The y? That's n, right? I have 6 points. So when I do all this, and I went and I did this before, I got 226 over 6, which is uh, approximately 37.7. Anybody do it already? You yeah. got to know anybody? That's what I'm getting. I hope it's right. And that's the variance. Big number. And it's all, look how big it is. Yeah, 144. I mean, you're right. They're really exaggerating those distances. So until we don't exaggerate it, we're going to take the, the square root. So this piece here is variance. If I take the square root of this, um, which is going to be 6 point something, right? 6.14 approximately. I have found the standard deviation. Right, so what did I just find here? Let's remind ourselves. We've seen this data before. We found the mean absolute deviation for it. The mean absolute deviation came out to 4.7. You were to take the absolute values of these numbers and average them, find the mean, you would get about 4.7. So they're different, aren't they? Why are they different? Well, because we use a different method to find it. We did some squaring first. The standard deviation is going to be a little bit bigger. Why is the standard deviation going to be a little bit bigger? Because it's standard. Why? Because we squared numbers to find it, right? Even with taking that square root, I mean, if these numbers were really big, they're going to be a little bit bigger, just a little bit bigger. Yeah. So in what things would you use square root? Oh, that's, like a, that's like a great question. When do you use one over the other? And it depends on the situation. I think the best answer I can give you is that many, many statisticians are going to use the standard deviation. They like that it's a little bit bigger. It leaves room for error, right? Um, remember we talked about error using a sample that, that introduces error when you do research as, as opposed to doing a population. So all the formulas that we're using are all going to use standard deviation because this kind of, I want the, the bigger numbers to be exaggerated just a little bit in case there's a mistake somewhere. Because standard deviation, as you'll see, when we start looking at what real life applications are for this, um, it could be a matter of life or death. Then that's kind of like a scary thought. But standard deviation is used to decide, you know, is some kind of uh, something in parameters that I need it to be or not. So some of them prefer this because it's, it's kind of a little more cautious than this one. Though that's fine too. We just don't see it used as much. But it, it's a fine one. And I, I don't have a real pat answer for that. Other than if you want to be kind of a little more conservative, standard deviation is here. Why is it, why don't you say we talk about that? Uh, we're going to see some really good examples about when might I use a standard deviation. And uh, just a quick example. If you're... Um, trying to make some medication and you want to test how much of a certain medication is in there because it's never exactly the same. You, know, you put some kind of chemicals in a pill to be a medication. So maybe they measure how much got into each pill. They're going to say it has to be within a certain range of values and it's usually within a standard deviation or so of it. So if you have this calculated wrong, maybe too much medication goes in the company. I mean, that's probably a bad example. But when we talk about real life examples, which is coming up next class, I think it'll become a little bit clearer. Usually I mean, it's not a matter of life and death, but you could have something that maybe is not within the parameters you really want it. So it can be important. Um, remember, we, we use these, this information to kind of draw some conclusions. We test on a sample, we come to a conclusion. Standard deviation.
information kind of plays into all that. And it, it's hard to understand if we haven't seen the examples yet, but we will. Um, Man and standard deviation measure the same thing. So if the, a question was just very general and said, what is the average distance from the mean for this set of data? I don't know, both these numbers are kind of correct. Because they really are both telling you, one is saying it's about five, one is saying it's about six. They should be close. They should be close. Standard deviation is going to be a little bit bigger. So I think it's a great question. OK, so let's see where we got here. We know about mean absolute deviation. Mean absolute deviation comes from you take these um, deviations, you take the positive values, average them. We have variance, the sigma square. Variance comes from you take those little deviations, you square them, and you take the average, or you find the mean. And then you have standard deviation, which is once you find variance, take its square root. Do you have a question?
calculator might look slightly different, but use L1 if you need to. Press enter. What's find me? Well, now, now remember we used to skip this because it was like, we don't know what that is. Do we know what this is now? What do you think? Here's a sigma and x. What do you think this one is? No. No. It is adding up the x's. We're adding up all the values. If you add up all those numbers, you get 7.6. That's what that is. This one is, if you square the numbers and add them up, you get that. This one, I'll tell you what that is in a minute, but look down here. What's this thing? Standard deviation. See, it's a lowercase sigma. There's an x in front of it. It just says of these x's that you put in here. What's my standard deviation to the nearest hundredth? 16.5. Hundredth. Oh, 16.47. Hundredth means two decimal places. Well, was that easier? No. No, you'd rather do it by hand? No, no, no. That was easy. Okay. Well, you go ahead and you're going to do by hand. We'll see you next year. Because I'm looking at all these numbers. And what was my mean was like some crazy number, 15.3, right? So now I'm subtracting from that. I don't want to do that by hand. I'm guaranteed I'm not going to do that right. I'm not doing that right. Do not? So I personally think it's easier to just do what the calculator tells me. Now, what about variance? What if I want variance? Oh, what if I want variance? Variance is um Remember now sigma means standard deviation. What is variance? Sigma square. So remember before when we do it by hand, you get variance first, you take a square root. But if I have the standard deviation first, what do I do to get back to variance? Square, square it. Now there's a couple ways to do that. One is to say, here's my estimate. It's approximately 16.5. Seven. I'm going to square it, and I just press my square button. The variance is approximately 271.26. Yay. Yay. Approximately. Now, we can get a better guess at it, because when you run a one variable statistics on the calculator, it actually saves that data. So we can go and retrieve that data. You want to see how? Say yes. 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 Good. Yes. All right. We're going to use the bars button. Do you see your clear button? Don't press it. Do you see it? Yeah. Look one left. Do you see bars? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Press it. Now, look. Go down the list. Look at number five. What's in there? This is all the stuff that was generated by the one bar stats. So you have to run one bar stats first, and it's going to store it. So that sigma value here, if I go to number four and I press enter, it says sigma x. I'm just going to press enter here. This is the value that it calculated. It stored the value for you. Whoa. So I'm going to go back in there. Do it again. Go back in there. Press bars. Press number five statistics. I'm pressing number four. Now I'm going to square it. Because what happens when I square it? What do I get? But how does it when I square standard deviation, what do I get? So here, this is a better estimate, 271.35. You press the square button. Square button is, see your seven? Look up. Which one? You, you say, I want, the I want your standard deviation, and then you square it. You're back in variance. <laughs> yeah. You're going to print bars. And then you're going to go to number five. I don't have to look at it. It's number five. And then you're going to choose your network. Yes. Yeah, but that one's too And then you're going to square that thing. So I'm saying that's what it is. Just square it. You know, you don't press seven. Just look at the buttons, right? All right. Now, which is easy? This one. Okay. So now go back to those you tries and do the other two. This is not. This time I want you to just put them in, find the standard. Let's leave that alone for now. Find the standard deviation and variance. You should have plenty of time to do that by the end of the 